about how it works in the cell. So it, it is going to become a protein factory. Is it RNA? Is it, does it impact the DNA? How, how long does it live in the cell? That's a good question. It is non-integrative virus, uh, although there are very low probability events of it integrating, it is generally thought of as a non-integrating virus. So it does not uh, interact or insert itself into your own genome. So that's why it's relatively safe from that perspective. It does, however, create its own mini episome uh, and hangs out next to your chromosome. So it's basically a small um, fake chromosome, if you will, that hangs out in your in your cells. And so far in the literature, we've seen a single injection last greater than 12 years in people. And so even though it's not integrating into your cells, enough copies of the virus get into your cells that it would take a long time from the cell's natural division state as an adult to get rid of all of it. Right. So 12 years. Okay. That was one of my questions. So when a cell divides, does it, does it continue in both the mother and the daughter cell? Theoretically, it's it's mostly based on probability. So if you had a thousand copies, the on average have about 500 in each of the daughter cells. Um, but it's not uh, it's not that cut and dry. It, it's just based on prob probabilistic. So as as you divide more and more, you'll have less and less copies, and they won't end up with the exact same in each of the cells. So does it continue to reproduce once it once you've no. injected? No. So that's it. It's just whatever gets injected. Yeah, think of it as a mailman delivering a message. And then that message just hangs out in, inside your home for a very long time. <laughs> right. But it is actively creating the proteins in the cell. Right? Yeah. So yeah. It's a bad analogy, but you, you would be reading the message every single day and <laughs> reading the word. But so when it's inside your, your cells, uh, your body, uh, your cells know what to do with DNA, which is to turn DNA into RNA and RNA into protein. And the proteins that eventually get secreted from those cells are the therapeutic proteins that we put into the virus. Right. Excellent. So when you go to larger payloads, will you be able to use AAVs or will you have to move on to like a different vector, do you think? AAV does have a small genome capacity. Um, you generally only get uh one to two smaller genes or one larger gene at a time um the genes most of the genes that uh we have found that are interesting as therapeutics um fit into aav so we haven't run into the size limitation yet of aav i know there are many proteins that are of interest uh, in therapeutics like uh DMD, um, disease muscular dystrophy the dystrophin protein is huge and will not fit in an aav um CRISPR-Cas9 is barely fitting into an AAV. So the um, there are lots of proteins that don't fit. The ones that we have found so far uh, fit very easily. This video is brought to you by Bioptimizers. Magnesium is a crucial mineral for hundreds of reactions in the body and impacts everything, including sleep and muscle and bone health. It is difficult to get sufficient magnesium through our food. In our efforts to remain fit and healthy, my wife and I frequently exercise after which it's important to recover well and get restful sleep. To help us with this, we chose Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizer because it blends all seven essential forms of magnesium into one effective supplement while also using all natural ingredients and being gluten, soy, and lactose free. It has improved our recovery and sleep quality since we've been taking it. And we are happy to tell you that Bioptimizers are offering a 10% discount for Magnesium Breakthrough to Modern Health Span audience. Just go to www.magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash modern or click on the link in the description to get a 10% discount with coupon code MODERN10. Thank you for your support. Uh, actually, so going back in the original paper, you, you looked at having all three at once, right? Um, FGF. 21, TGF beta and alpha close up, but they didn't play well together when all three were together. Could, could you talk a little bit about what you saw in terms of the three of them working together? Yeah, the uh, you saw a big benefit from having two versus one. So FGF 21 plus TGF beta or TGF beta plus alpha clotho both had really great effects that were additive uh, in the different disease models that we tested. Um, in that paper, we actually kept all three genes on separate viruses and co-infected viruses at the same time. 
Um, so we were able to modulate the levels based on uh, the, the data in the animals. Um, the uh, orthogonality of the gene network seems to be important when trying to combine additive effects. There is a large overlap between FGF21 and alpha clotho in that they both use beta clotho receptor. And while we did not investigate exactly what was causing the disruption from the effect, the beneficial effect from FGF21 by itself or alpha clotho by itself, mm -hmm. when they're together, they seem to be competing for resources and network uh, effects inside the cell, activating mm -hmm. similar pathways, but divergent slightly. So you don't get full benefit from either protein, and it seems to be less effective when FGF21 and alpha clotho are, are in the same cell. But when TGF beta and FGF21 are together, it was beneficial. And when FGF21 mm -hmm. or, and when alpha clotho and TGF beta were together, it was beneficial. So you have to be careful about the orthogonality when combining different genes together to uh, get a beneficial effect from those combinations. Can you talk a little bit about the process of finding these three? I mean, why were what were you looking for in the what characteristics were you looking for in these three in in the ones that you picked in particular? That's a good question. So I started out reading all the aging literature and databases on different aging genes since I was relatively new to the field when I started my postdoc. And there's about 65 different confirmed genes in mice that have been shown to increase the health and lifespan of mice. And what really narrowed my search is which ones of those are secreted and which ones of those had some of the best effects on lifespan. And the reason I chose the secreted uh, criteria was to um, take advantage of the fact that I, uh, AAV doesn't go into all the cells, but gets into the liver really well. The liver is a really good protein production factory. And so I wanted to take advantage of that. And so the secreted nature of the protein was important and combine that with their ability to increase uh, health and lifespan. Um, some of the best increases in health and lifespan are FGF21 and alpha clotho. And so that's how they made the top of my list. And I tried different combinations of those in different disease states. Okay, excellent. Okay, which would imply that um, aging is a system-wide thing rather than a cellular and thing at an individual cell level. Um, yeah, I think it's um, emergent behavior from individual uh, gene networks. So you, it, it is a system-wide problem that comes from the individual genes interacting inside the cell. So at the cellular level, you start to have misregulated genes that then secrete proteins to other cells and give other information to those cells. And that continues to, it's a very interconnected system. No cell is by itself, but it definitely starts at the cellular level and then has systemic effects elsewhere. So you may not need to affect every single cell to have full age reversal in an organism because uh, the cells are all talking but um, you may need a large percentage of those. So the systemic, the secreted proteins get around this fact though, because having the secreted proteins allows them to get to every single cell. So we don't need to uh, right. make sure we infect all the cells. Right, but at some point potentially then you would need to figure out how to get into more of the cells. Yeah, and there's plenty of technology and work being done on those fronts by ourselves as well as others getting better viruses that get into more cells and have better infectivity with lower doses for increased safety. And um, different tissue types every day are, are being uh, focused on to increase the effectiveness of the viruses that we currently use and teaching them how to get into other tissues and cells as well.